Hello everyone, welcome to another video of MIDA short video series. In this video, we will be talking about balance cantilever bridge geometry. So we know that many a times we are having something like straight geometry for a balance cantilever bridge as you can see here. And then we can have a curved portion along with it. So often people think that in balance cantilever bridge, they cannot define both the geometry together using the wizard. That is true. We can either define the radius or the straight bridge. But that is not a limitation because we can have a workaround here. So to solve this issue, like we are creating a model with a straight bridge, which you can see here, a balanced cantilever bridge made from FCM wizard of straight bridge. And you can see the node numbers at the ends that I'm having at these locations. And then later on, I have created another model with a curved geometry. And this is again model using the wizard option of FCM bridge by providing the radius of convex nature of 200 meter. And now I want to copy some elements and nodes from this geometry at the initial portion to the end of that model that we just saw. So we will see how do we do that. We can go to the element tables in the work menu and we can copy these node numbers so we are having two tables node corresponding to nodes and elements. We will be copying both the tables. First I go to the node tables and I will copy some nodes that I want. You can see the X, Y, Z coordinates of these nodes. And we can open an Excel file and we can just paste this values as we know that the tables are compatible with Excel. And the trick here is like we want to copy these nodes at the end of this bridge. So we want these coordinates that are present at the end and we will have that curved geometry ahead of this portion. So I will go to the node table of this model and I will see the coordinates at the end. So you can see the x, y, z coordinates. We are having a x coordinate of 300 meter and we will be using this 300 meter x coordinate and increment the node values for the curved geometry. So we go to the Excel table and I'll copy these values again and I will make an increment of 300 meter in X coordinate. So we can just give 300 plus the initial coordinate value that we are having and use it for the all the nodes for X coordinates and we will have the updated X coordinates. Y and Z can remain similar. I will copy the nodes from the second row because we already have a node at 300 location which is this elite node number 73 and I can just paste these nodes here. So you can see the updated geometry like we are having the nodes for the curved geometry and I will be using the nodes till 100 value itself just for the ease of demonstration. Now we need to copy the elements from the other curve geometry. So we go to the element tables. So here we are to the element tables of the curve geometry. I can just copy the element. In the Excel file. So if you see that we are having node numbers connectivity between the elements and as we have increment, incremented the node number, so we also need to increment the node values here. Because you see the first node that we are having is of 73 and then 84. So I will first update the values from 84 node to 100 node. So we go to the Excel table. And I'll just copy this one more time and I'll update the values of node numbers as 83 plus 1 since the first node that I'm having is 84 and I can just copy the same formula at the other locations as well. 
So as we know that we have no numbers till 100, so I will be using only those elements. And I'll also have a no element at the initiation level from node number 73 to 84. So I'm copying another element which will connect element number 73 and 84. So if you see the model, here you see that we are having first element from 73 to 84. And we'll remove the element ahead of node number 100 and then just copy these element table to our straight model. Go to the element tables and just copy them easily here. Now you see the updated geometry with the elements being defined and you can see the tapered sections as well that are in use. So there is no limitation on the type of section that you can use while copying. We can easily create the tapered group for this tapered section. So I'll just give the name of new tapered. Select the elements that I need to make a tapered group for them and select the variation and click on add. So you can see now these are converted to tapered section with the varying depth. So a curve geometry is defined. Now another problem arises with people is the definition of tendon profile. Like it is the one of the most complex thing when we are like copying the elements. But using this tendon template in PSC Bridge Bizarre, we can easily create the tendon profile as well for this new geometry. So I just need to select the elements on which I need to define the profile. I click on add and we can give the values of our tendon profile. So I'm giving 0.5 and we are having two profile, one for the x5 plane and another for the xz. So here is the x1 and here it is the xz. I'm selecting the straight and using these guide diagrams you can give the offset distance of t and t dash. Click on OK. Our profile is defined. And we can also copy this profile for the y direction as well. So as we know, there will not be a single tendon profile, but there will be like layer comprising of more tendon profile. So we can just give the offset and copy them as number of times as we want in both the direction. So I'm giving offset as minus five to define in another direction. And you can see here in the diagram, the profile is updated. I'll just create the new name for these. I reset the name and click on OK. So you can see the profile has been defined easily with this feature. So I hope this video was helpful for you like to define a complex geometry of a balanced cantilever bridge having straight portion as well as curved portion.